Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Technique was given and that technique was called Punnett square. Now the name is little weird right because it is named after the famous personality who actually gave it. So Punnett was the scientist who spent a lot of time looking into these crosses and he only devised this technique and that is why it was named Punnett square. So it is basically a diagram that predicts the outcome of a particular cross. So here with this diagram doesn't matter how complicated your cross is but you will be able to predict the possibilities of the results that okay these are the possible offspring of springs of this particular cross. So you will be able to do that. So let us try to see how uh, the Punnett square works. Now as I said this was named after Reginald Punnett who worked on this. So now let us try to create a Punnett square of the same Mendel's experiment so that you are able to understand how it is actually done. So what was done? Homozygous tall was crossed with homozygous dwarf. Right? So what are the gametes that can be produced from this capital T? is the only option and here you can produce these two gametes small t and small t so that is the only option that can be produced so these are the gametes now what we do is we write the gametes of the male gamete and the female gametes on the top and the side of the table so let us suppose if i write the male gametes here the female gametes here i am just calling them male and female okay so this is how I'm writing it and this is the Punnett square. So this is how a Punnett square looks like. So what do you do? So T and T, this will combine to form a capital T small t. Similarly, this will combine to form a capital T small t. This will also form the same thing, right? So this actually, these boxes actually tell you all the possible offsprings that can be produced as a result of this cross. Right? So the gametes are the gametes are written on the topmost row and the leftmost column of the square. So if you see here you have the gametes, again here you have the gametes. So basically this is how you write it. The male and the female gametes are written here like this. Right? So your F1 generation, so you can say that your F1 generation all are T, T, that is all are tall. So that is the result of your F1 generation. Now again, what do you do? So this was your parental generation and this was your F1 generation. Now what if we want to find out the output of the F2 generation? So how do you find the outcome of F2 generation? What do you do in F2 generation? In F2 generation, we basically cross the F1 individuals, that is capital T, small t, Cross self pollinated with capital T small t, right? So, what are the possible gametes that can be produced here? Capital T small t, here also capital T small t. So, let us do the same thing. Let us write the gametes at the topmost row and at the leftmost column, right? And then let us try to prepare the Punnett square. I think I prepared it in the wrong way. Let me draw it correctly. So this is capital T, small t and here you have again capital T and small t. So this is how you have to draw it. There I incorrectly wrote it in the same row. Clear? So now you can actually find out all the possibilities. This two combined will be capital T, capital T. This two combined will be capital T, small t. This two combined again will be capital T, small t. And this and this combined will be small t, small t. So these are the possible outcomes of the cross between the heterozygous F1 individuals, right? So from this, what do you get? So if you talk about the F2 output, so the F2 output, if you see, this is going to be tall, this is also going to be tall, this is going to be tall, and this is going to be dwarf. So just by looking at this table, you can find out the phenotype ratio so the phenotypic ratio is going to be the ratio of the tall to dwarf so there are three tall to for one dwarf so three is to one is the phenotypic ratio similarly you can find out the genotypic ratio 
looking at the outcomes from the Punnett square that is capital T capital T is to capital T small t is to small t small t which is equal to 1 is to 2 is to 1. Correct? So if I ask you how many percentage of the F2 individuals are going to be dwarf, you can find that because only one is dwarf. So which one is dwarf? This one is dwarf. So only one is dwarf. And how many total are produced? 1, 2, 3, 4 out of 4. So 1 by 4 into 100. So that is going to be 25%. So 25% plants are going to be dwarf in the F1 generation. So similarly, you can find out how many plants are going to be tall. So just by looking at the outcomes of the Punnett square, you can actually answer all these questions. The phenotypic ratio, genotypic ratio, how many percentage will have a specific phenotype or a genotype. So you can actually conclude everything just looking at the Punnett square. So all you have to do in order to draw the Punnett square is you need to determine the gametes. Once you know the gametes, you can actually prepare the Punnett square. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.